up sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats here with a banger reaction for you it is officially the weekend and we are kicking things off with a brand new mark rober reaction that is right but this one i'm not gonna lie it's gonna be creepy it's gonna be screamish because mark rober just dropped bed bugs what you've been told is totally false now bugs really don't bug me except for spiders ticks and anything in a bed bugs do not belong in a bed fam and we're gonna see bed bugs and i'm gonna be freaking out but i'm on hype for this but before we jump in this video can you show mark rober some love by subscribing to his channel and liking the original video and if you enjoy my reaction smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps but enough talking let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro hot sauce beats is finally here hot sauce beats is finally here eat sleep make beats eat sleep make beats hot sauce beats I hope you guys are ready to get creeped out. Let's go. This is me subjecting my body to science. No. Oh my God. No. By letting no. a bed bug eat <laughs> I'm not me. ready for this. That's my blood. Because for four years now, I've been wanting to make this exact video, taking a deep dive dude, into the fascinating world of oh, bed dude. bugs. There's I'm not going to like this, bro. Out there regarding dealing with I'm not going to like this, man. I just, uh, maybe bugs do bother me. I don't know. Because the thought of cockroaches in my, maybe just bugs in the house. Bugs should not be in my house. I don't care. I don't. It's not. It's not part of my ecosystem. I'm. I'm. I'm the top of my pyramid. I don't want bugs in my house. Bugs. And today <laughs> we're gonna debunk nearly all of them, heading out in the field with the experts and running some experiments. So if you could power through your oh, squeamishness bro. No, and no, spend no, the no, next few no. minutes here with me, how long is this video? Really blow your mind with some facts ah! about bed bugs you definitely don't <laughs> know. But I'm a bed bugs expert. Twenty four exactly minutes. I was rounding up. Like, uh, dude, I don't like this, bro. Them, but most I was rounding. I meant twenty four rounding up from twenty three. What to do if you do get them? Because the punchline is, it's actually not that hard to get rid of them as long as you ignore all the bad advice out there and follow the surprisingly simple steps I'll demonstrate in this hey, video. Hey, we're gonna learn on today. And head across the country, all the Getting way to Rutgers University to visit their urban entomology lab. And this is the great thing about Mark Rober's channel is he's always debunking stuff and teaching us ways how to get rid of bed bugs, which I I want to know because again I don't like bed I don't like any bugs in my house or in my bed. And I want to know how to get rid of them the correct way. So thank you, Mark Rober. I appreciate you. Oh, very much. basically means bugs very you remote. don't want in your house. To meet with Dr. Wong, the world's foremost bed bug expert. And the main reason for visiting his lab was to run a bunch of experiments. How do you, how do you become an, the, the, the highest expert in bed bugs? I, I want to know. Meant to test all the things you read online that people swear will get rid of bed bugs. But before we got to that, I wanted to meet some of the little guys myself. Oh, bro. Thousands of bed bugs here. Thousands. Probably more than 20,000. Oh my gosh. This is like the Fort Knox of bed bugs. Okay. Can I pick up one of these? Sure. Okay, I cannot drop this, I feel like. This one probably had four or five hundred. Four or five hundred in this? Yeah. You want to open it, you want me to open it. I'll open it. So were they, were they on the lid? Was there, was there bugs on the lid? My first time ever seeing a real bed bug. Here we go. Do you want to use gloves? Should I use gloves? <laughs> uh, we always use gloves. I should use gloves then. <laughs> it's just like, uh, hold up. Do you, oh, uh, dude, I just, I'm just imagining when he opens it, it's just gonna like, flow of bugs, dude. I, I know that's go not gonna it. happen, but. Off a band -aid. Oh, gross. Oh, there is a lot. Oh! Ah! Oh, man, there's no! so many of them. So this is what oh, bed bugs fudge. look like. I just never knew. All right, so let me just cover some bed bug basics. It takes a few months for them to mature from egg all the way to full grown male and female. And in those few months, they pass through these five stages of growth. You can oh, oh, bro. Am I just being overly dramatic or do you guys feel this way too? Please tell me I'm not being uh, a pansy here. This is nasty, dude. Imagine, oh, just imagine sleeping and this stuff's just crawling all over you. Ah! Ah! <laughs> See the relative size here compared to oh a Oh my God, bro. And as humans, we have five senses, but their superhuman antenna give them two extra senses, allowing them to detect both body heat and carbon dioxide being breathed out by a potential host. Then once they get close, 
are superheroes. They're they're villains. They are literally villains. They have powers. They're magic. They're wizards. They use their sense of smell also on their antenna to lock down the exact final position of the person. Which is all oh, to dude, say, that's if nasty, you exhale, bro. You they're hunters. Rest on them, they get real excited. That is crazy. Come on, bro. They're so stoked right now to eat. Sorry, guys. Their lifespan is anywhere from three months to a year, and ideally, they like to feed about once a week. But there's this unsettling fact. Without feeding, they can live three to six months. What? Because yeah. they just don't move very much? Plus, blood is highly nutritious material. So <laughs> they can stay in the resting stage for three to six months. And the professor says something like, I think ticks, I think a tick can, uh, so ticks, they like, they put themselves on tree and then they go in this dormant stage, right? Hibernation. And when a, a like a, a branch moves it can sense the vibrations which i don't know how it tells the difference from someone brushing up against it um compared to wind but it wakes it up supposedly and i could be wrong about this but i think a tick can go without feeding for a year bro and it might even be more it could be less i think it's a year though i could be wrong i'm probably right though i don't know three to six months here but for my first of five super wild bed bug facts if their environment is relatively cold they can survive up to 300 days without eating anything they're really flat because they are hungry i came so my house really cold too they fed, they're gonna be more flat right. i'd love to get a shot of it going from flat and brown to oh if you want to do that it put it on the arm you can see <laughs> yeah, he's being serious i had a decision to make Okay, I'll do it. For so, science, we're gonna make a brown bed bug red. So average feeding time is about five to 10 minutes. I feel like I'm at the Red Cross here. Let's do this. Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, no, oh. it's start feeding. It's already feeding? Yeah, this is feeding. So right now I feel nothing. So you're not very reacting to the bites. The butt's sticking up in the air now. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's getting bigger. And there's just something about seeing another organism steal your blood that sharpens the focus and leads one to start pondering some questions. That oh my God, you can see it flowing in it, dude. Oh, I don't like this chat. I really don't Probably like this. Probably should have been pre -pondered. Oh, you can see the and bubbles. They carry diseases, you can right? see the bubbles. How they don't. 10 minutes ago. And this is my second super wild bed bug fact. Wow. They don't actually carry or transmit any diseases, which sort of serves as an evolutionary advantage in the world of coexisting with humans because the government doesn't really support research to eradicate them since they don't really pose a widespread health threat. When it's done, They're we'll let's start running real quick. I will run slowly because it's uh, bigger, fatter. They're easily crawling the walls of this dish, by the way. Right, so we tend to put the talcum powder in the interior walls so they cannot escape. I think we have some talcum powder. You think? <laughs> that is, that the thing <laughs> is the part They're running I'm amok! Right. About. Oh gosh. Oh my god, dude, he's big. Okay, okay, finish. What do I do now? Nine minutes, finish. Don't Squish. worry, I'll put it in the dish. So nine minutes. Dude, what do you think would... <laughs> Imagine, dude, if Mark just went whack. What do you think that guy would do? He'd be like, what? <laughs> Normally after I give blood, I get juice and cookies. And when we put my new blood buddy next to an unfed bed wow, bug, wow, bro, the difference was astounding. Which made me really curious what it would look like under the microscope that was just sitting there begging to be used. Oh my gosh. Wow, those are my red blood cells. Oh, are those bubbles even? No way. Life is amazing. I don't oh, think dude. I reacted, right? That's good. So you're not as reactive as me. So I can put even more on my arm then. You can try. Oh, Mark, I'm why, dude? Why, Mark? You are, are you crazy, bro? What are you doing, fam? This is nasty. I mean, in the name of science, I guess, but. Oh, dude, yeah, I'm, I knew, I knew, I knew I'd be scream, squeamish on this. I knew I wouldn't like this. This is no bueno. Not today, Satan. Taking one in the name of science, and we're gonna load up ten bed bugs on my arm. Ten. <laughs> That's one. Two. We've also put some DEET, which they Three. don't like, to kind of make a barrier so they stay in the middle. Yeah. This is like Thanksgiving. There's Five. one down there. Can you get that one? Six. Please. Seven. Oh, I can feel them bite. Like Eight. if I don't look. Nine. Ten. Okay. Oh, come on, bro. Oh, come on, dude. I don't like this, bro. Oh, 
Oh, that one's turning red already. Mark, Could you why, imagine bro? just some people who have a bad infestation just every night? Like, this is what their leg looks like. They can get thousands of bites. A yeah, night? Many. Yeah, a night. They're getting bigger and bigger by the second. Oh, you better not start mating on me. This one finished. Okay, I don't like your attitude. Let's get rid of this guy. <laughs> Bam! Professor. Bam! Set Professor. him on fire, Mark! Professor. <laughs> As they finish, I vote them off the island. I don't want him crawling up my arm. He's full, and you're off the island. Oh, and you're off the island. And he's done, peace. Down to two. This I'm is like a Mr. Beast challenge. Last to leave the arm wins a gallon of rabbit blood. Oh, we have a winner! He gets dead. Oh, there he goes. And so once again, by way of comparison, here are the 11 bed bugs that just spent some quality time with me versus 11 unfed bed bugs of similar ages. They all need to die. All right, so um, all done. So uh, are we gonna are we gonna learn anything like about do they do they even serve a purpose? Are they just here to torment human beings? I don't know what they would do. Why? What kind of purpose would they serve? That's what I want to know, dude. What purpose do these bed bugs serve? There was 11 total. It took about 10 minutes, but I would have no idea they just made a meal out of me. Like, I felt a tiny prick on one of the 11, but other than that, like, it's a tricky little parasite. And I'm not alone. Half of all people have no reaction to a bed bug bite, whereas the other 50% of the population will have some kind of reaction to their saliva oh, that wow. will look something like this in the wow. morning. So having survived the bloodletting, it was time to run our experiments and head into the vault sealed by the huge wooden door. All right, so we're here in the bed bug test chamber. We've set up a bunch of tests in here. So for example, <laughs> these two we have these dishes. Basically, they can climb up the wall, then they get stuck in this trough. It's too slippery to climb out. Inside each of these troughs, there's a little vial of this good smelling stuff that to the bed bugs smells like a human. So they're gonna go to either one of these. So this one in this corner is a control. Whereas in this corner, we have an ultrasonic pest repeller. So we wanna see if this actually does anything Okay, or that's not. pretty clever. So 24 hours, we'll come back. I like how they you set up this this area to test this stuff, and it, it makes sense, right? And then it either works or it no. So you're gonna know. You're gonna know real quick, dude. Is it gonna repel it or not? Back. We'll count the number of bed bugs in this dish versus this one. There's way more in the control, and this is actually doing something. But if there's the same number of each, then this is nothing more than a gimmick to steal your money. In addition to testing the ultrasonic bed bug repeller, we use an identical test setup to investigate some of the other supposed remedies to bed bugs commonly found online, including Ooh. dryer sheets, mothballs, baking soda, and essential oils. And just for the sake of my curiosity, we also place this vertical post in a dish. For my super wild bed bug fact number three out of five, the professor told me that bed bugs are attracted to vertical objects because if you think about it, humans generally sleep at the highest elevation in any given room. So their logic is just crawl up any vertical object you see humans up until there? you eventually find a warm-blooded meal at the top. So this is to mimic Why on the toe, host, bro. We do have an Why does he gotta go on the toe, bro? Leave the toes alone. The toes didn't do anything. Come on. Fact in, in both trays, the hypothesis is that there will actually be more bed bugs in this tray because you have that vertical post. And if that turns out to be true, that's pretty wild. And in addition to those six tests, on the floor. we set up some residual effects tests where we treated a surface with each of these three products you could buy at the local I'm hardware store. I'm gonna start sleeping on the floor, chat. Marketed to kill bed bugs. I'm never, I will never sleep up on a post again. Mark my words. No more posts. Ever! Ever! And finally, we tested this fogger spray, also specifically designed for killing oh. bed bugs. <laughs> Godspeed, little fellas. And then we set it off, leaving three dishes of exposed bed bugs at different spots in the same room. And so as a final step, we placed the bed bugs at the center of each of the six trays in the bed bug vault, oh, and we were underway. The experiment's all set up. We're gonna close the wooden vault. Do you guys have the same look check. on your face as I do? Run. You're just like, and no, the experiments no, were no. Running, Professor Wong invited us to join him on a research visit to an apartment building nearby that had been receiving frequent reports of bed bugs. So him and his team were going out to collect some oh samples. Oh my God, dude, no. Oh, no, bro. Some new treatment approaches. And after entering the apartment, it didn't take long to find our first culprit. The bed bug here, eh? Which the professor told me was dead. It's dead, yeah. When in fact, he was just a good faker. 
By the way, this is a bit of a warning that some people might find the next few minutes a little gross, so skip ahead a bit if you just want to see the results of the test. It turns out one in a thousand houses or apartments have bed bugs in the US today, which might sound bad, but for my super wild bed bug fact number four, before 1950, it was one in three houses that had bed bugs. Hence the origin of the saying, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Midnight to 3 a.m. is typically their most active time, and it takes a little more than 10 minutes to get to you, a little less than 10 minutes to feed, as you saw with my arm, oh my and a little God, more bro. than 10 minutes to get back to their hiding spot. If you're suspicious you're sleeping on a mattress with bed bugs, just check under the mattress in the corners and look for bed bug poop stains like this. Just remember, this is more of an extreme case, so yours might not look quite this bad. These two here are actually mating, which we saw quite a bit in the lab too. Which actually leads to my final super wild bed bug fact, Eggs. and buckle up, because this one's a doozy. Typically oh, in nature. Dude, <laughs> Anytime he says, oh, this is a doozy, and he looks like he's got the evil look on his face, no, it is, it's not a good fact. It's about to be bad. In order to make a baby of a thing, you have a male, which let's say is represented by this plug, and a female, which let's say is represented by this outlet. And if you plug in the cord, you get an adorable little baby. And just like in pretty much all the rest of nature, female bed bugs totally have an outlet. Except male bed bugs prefer to take this approach. The scientific term for this is called traumatic insemination. And just like my wall is now damaged, it actually damages the abdomen of the females, leading to significantly shorter lifespans. Researchers aren't exactly sure why they've evolved to use this alternate approach, but it must offer some kind of overall advantage, leading females to lay up to five eggs every day, and you can see their handiwork here on that same chair we saw before. Like all insects, bed bugs have an Aww. exoskeleton, so what you're seeing here is as they grow bigger from stage to stage, they molt and leave behind their old exoskeleton. How bad is this infestation relative to most you see? Yeah, moderate. Moderate? Oh, this is moderate? You can see tens of thousands of To prove his point, he later sent me a video of this house with a charming exterior, which- Oh yeah, I was gonna say that looks, that looks like a beautiful house. They had treated a few months ago. The truly staggering part about this place though, was that only one person lived there. He just wasn't allergic to their bites, and he just learned to live with them. Back at our thankfully moderate he learned to live how how do you learn to live with them how how is that a thing bro how do you learn to live with them moderate infestation the professor and his team took some samples for study later and started treating the room no now, surprisingly no. the apartments both above and below this one also had some minor bed bug issues so if you're working to get rid of bed bugs in your apartment just make sure you let your landlord know what's going on in case the unit next to you happens to be the primary source to prevent you from getting a second wave and as we were wrapping up the professor dropped a bit of a bombshell about how it was pretty uh -oh. likely we had at least some bed bugs on us at this point even if you can see they you may not see like yeah they can they can which is why he always plays it safe oh actually i have a spare clothing I always when i go home uh, <laughs> uh mark did you did you uh, did i forget to tell you to bring some spare clothes here bro did i forget to tell you always washing the shoes only for bedbug shoes. What? I Nobody told us any of <laughs> We, unfortunately, were not told to bring, nor did we have a yep. spare change of clothes. What have I done? So we did the next best thing by steaming ourselves, which instantly kills the bed bugs from the heat. That is until the professor decided he should check his shoes and found this. Is it alive? Yeah, it's alive. Oh my gosh. No uh, way. Uh, bro. At which point, just steaming ourselves seemed- Literally, they got a hitchhiker. They got Houdini. They got the Houdini of bed bugs on them. Wildly insufficient. And because apparently it's illegal in the state of New Jersey to just publicly chill in your underwear, me and my crew hit up the local Goodwill to wait things out in style. So the next day we headed back to the lab to check on our results God, in our freshly so laundered dude. clothes. But can I just take a moment to say it's the best to hang out with bug people because they have cool door knockers and interesting magazine subscriptions. The only downside being <laughs> they like to study more than just bed bugs. Oh, it smells. This is where they keep the cockroaches. And as you might recall, I really, really don't like cockroaches. <laughs> Each one I had thousands of those. Wow, that's so disgusting. Oh, oh, this is even worse, the bro. Kind I hate. So these are the American the largest one in the U.S. They're freaking antenna. That's the worst sound in the world. Wait, they have wings? Yeah, they have Shut wings. Shut it! Shut that in door. Florida, they can fly too, but here temperature is cold. Did he just say in Florida they can fly? 
in Florida the cock the cockroaches fly? Bruh! I'm sorry, Disney World. I'm never coming back. I'm never coming back to Florida. Fudge that. So if it was a little warmer in this lab, they would fly? They will fly. Oh, my God! <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. So we made our way back upstairs where I felt much more comfortable. Time to check the results. So this ultrasonic pest repeller did nothing. If anything, it attracted them. Oh, we had wow. 120 bed bugs with the ultrasonic sensor. Over here for the control, we had 101. Clearly that that's does crazy. nothing to repel bed bugs. That's and of course that confirms our hypothesis considering bed bugs don't even have ears. Not to mention that apartment we visited had a couple plugged into the wall themselves. So definitely save your money on that one. Next up was the vertical post test. That is wild. There are so many over here by the vertical post. Literally none over here on the other side. Oh wow. And the remaining four tests all had similar results. I'm sleeping so on the floor. The average, which was around four bed bugs trapped in the dish that was surrounded by either the dryer sheets, mothballs, baking soda, or essential oils, with around 26 bugs trapped in the control. These results clearly show bed bugs prefer to avoid these four items because they all have a really strong scent and bed bugs have a really good oh. sense of smell, but they don't do anything to kill the bed bugs. According to the professor, oh. these act as an annoyance, but the bed So you just gotta have a really good, really good smelling sheets. Really good smelling sheets. Good thing I use two dryer sheets on every load. 100%. Bed bugs would gladly walk over them if it was between temporarily having to deal with the smell and starving to death. As for the residual effect test with the pesticide specifically engineered to kill bed bugs, it was Water. even worse news. The spray, aerosol, and fogger bed bug killers all killed about 12% of the bed bugs after 10 days. And before you go all glass half full and think, well, 12% is better than nothing. But they laid like a couple thousand eggs. Thing, our control, which was just water, also had a 12% mortality rate. So it's literally not better than nothing. According to Professor Wong, part of the reason for these terrible results is that many strains of bed bugs have developed immunity to a lot of these chemicals over the years. Bro. And he thinks in 10 years, all bed bugs will be immune. And this sort of makes sense because wow. they're constantly undergoing localized mass extinction events when people try and spray them. And only the most hardy minority survive each time and pass on their increasingly pesticide resistant genes. There were some chemicals that on average were effective in killing no about 50% if you sprayed the bed bugs directly. But if they were just hanging out in the area you sprayed later, it's once again the same as water. The problem with this is you'll only ever see a small portion of the bed bugs you actually have. So direct spray pesticides are sort of pointless if your goal is to eradicate the entire oh, population. Oh yeah, because you don't that's know where the they're hiding. News. Now here's the good news. There was a superstar in our test and that was the diatomaceous earth with a nearly 90% mortality rate after 10 days. This stuff is just crushed fossilized shells from tiny prehistoric aquatic organisms called diatoms. The key here is their shells were silica based and silica is what you see in those packets you see sometimes in packages that you're not supposed to eat. Silica is useful because it absorbs moisture incredibly well. For bed bugs, this is a bummer because when they walk by it, it sticks to their exoskeleton as you can see here under the microscope and they die from dehydration in a matter of hours hours to days. Wow. We're eating lunch right after this, which is a bad idea in hindsight. <laughs> the best part here no. is they end up transferring this to each other back in their hiding spots. And since every organism needs water to live, they can never develop immunity to it. There's also one more bit of really good news, and that's bed bugs die at 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, instantly. This is also 100% effective and there's no way to build immunity to it. And a really wow. easy way to get a bed bug to 120 degrees as we demonstrated earlier is with a clothes dryer or a steamer, or if you want the nuclear option, you can work with professionals to heat your entire house to that temperature. Now that we have a better sense of what does Bro, and does- literally, you just gotta cook them. You just gotta cook them out of your house, chat. <laughs> what did they say? Was it 122 degrees? Bro, that's a hot house. On the bright side, you would never have bed bugs in a sauna. So I'm going to put my bed in a sauna. I need to turn my bedroom into a sauna. Note taken. Thank Doesn't you, Mark. Work. Let's talk about Thank what you, to Mark. do if you actually get bed bugs. And the first thing to point out is the best way to get rid of them is to not get them in the first place. And the most common way people get bed bugs Hotels. is through traveling. So when you get to your room, here are three simple tips. First, pull back the bed sheets and check the corners of the mattress now that you know what to look for. Second, don't set your suitcase on the bed or the floor. Instead, set it on the luggage rack or for... But why? Don't they, don't they like perches, posts? Don't they climb up? 
For some reason you feel like you need to be extra cautious, the bathtub. And third, don't put your clothes in the hotel drawers or leave them just lying around. Whatever you're not wearing should just stay in your luggage or hanging up on the hangers. Dude, I All will right, never so look at hotels the same hotel again. Travel, but then you got back and bought that couch on Craigslist for a smoking deal, and now you got bed bugs in your home. In Professor Wong's experience, you don't actually need to spend $4,000 hiring an exterminator as long as you know there's three steps for defense and three for offense. First up for defense, you put your bed in a bag. You can buy these mattress and box spring encasements off Amazon that once you zip them around your bed, basically seal in any bed bugs currently living inside. Just remember they can live up to 300 days, so you can't take it off for a year. And they not only trap in any current bed bugs, but they also remove all the mattress hems and clever hiding spots they love to use. Number two, your clothes dryer. Wash and dry your clothes and sheets. So you're just not supposed to have a bed for a year. Or you could just put that bag outside on a hot summer day and heat it up. I think that would work too, right? It's at least once a week. More often doesn't hurt. Importantly, you want to wash them in hot water and dry them on the highest heat setting because it's impossible for them to survive this. Number three, simplify and declutter. Simplify the room to take away any hiding spots by putting clutter into plastic bags <laughs> or totes. Don't They're have anything in, in clean your bedroom. Clothes, but dirty clothes smell nice to them. So it's good to also store those in a plastic bag or tote until you're ready to wash them. Also, move your bed away from the wall so the only way they can get on the bed is by climbing up the legs. So that's the three steps for defense, now for the offense. Number Burn. one, vacuum. Make sure you vacuum the bedroom floor and the bed area once a week. Just be sure to empty anything you've collected into a bag and into the trash. And number two, we've got diatomaceous earth, which as you recall, was the superstar from our test. Sleep on you it. You should definitely apply this around the bed, but it's especially useful in penetrating the cracks and crevices close to the bed, including around and behind power outlets. The key is applying just a light dusting like this. If you leave it in clumps, it will actually backfire and not be as effective because they'll just navigate around it. And finally, at number three, we've got steam. Are you guys just absolutely disgusted like I am? I'm like, dude, I'm... I feel like I need to go clean my house right now. I need to clean... I need, I, I'm going to wash my sheets. I'm going to vacuum my floor again. Hmm. Simple clothes no. steamer like this no. will do the job. And I think it's great that with all the years and money spent on creating all these synthetic pesticides, the two most effective methods for killing bed bugs are just crushed up rocks and really hot water, which are by That's far crazy. the two most simple and natural. Use a steamer all around your bed once a week, but if you find something you want to treat you can't steam or put in the dryer, you can put it in a bag and then put it in the freezer for three days and that will also kill them. Professor Wan said if you have a small infestation and you just notice them, then using these three defensive and offensive steps will totally take care of the problem without needing to spend money on an exterminator. However, if you've got a lot of bed bugs and you've had them for a long time, then getting professional help is probably a good idea. The entire house heating option takes about eight hours and it's I'm, the most I'm surefire way to chat. totally eradicate I'm every so disgusted right now, dude. At once, but it can cost up to $4,000. I just want to sleep in, in, that, that in those crushed rocks. That means playing offense and things are looking good. Stick these traps under the bed legs so you can monitor and have some peace of mind that they are in fact totally gone. All right, that's it. You're a bed bug oh, expert. Now just imagine you get up and like they're all, they're all in those crevices. Ah! I'm hopeful that at least some of you will have a renewed appreciation for the fascinating natural world around us. And I'm everyone disgusted. else can just congratulate yourself on making it to the end while soaking in a bathtub of Listerine. Oh, we sub, this Mark. We sub. Let's go! Oh, and that I'd is like too to cool. Out to demonstrate just how much more accurate it is <laughs> than their near human selves. Wow. Dude, I am the worst. All right, let me bring in. I'm the worst frisbee thrower ever, dude. All right, chat. Uh, I hope I am not the only one, dude, that is just absolutely disgusted. That was nasty, bro. So yeah, make sure you're cleaning your sheets. Make sure you're doing all your laundry. Use tons of fabric softener and dryer sheets to get rid of them. But thank you, Mark. Thank you for teaching us the ways of getting rid of these bugs because that is pretty McNasty. And now I'm just disgusted and I... Yeah, no, no, not today, Satan. Woo, okay, bugs. Dude, just bugs in your house. They just do not belong there. And it really freaks me out and it grosses me out. And now I'm just disgusted. But I had an absolute blast reacting to this. I learned so much. Some of it, I wish I didn't know. Actually, no, I, I'm glad I learned it because now I can just not freak out. Hey, that's lying, I'll freak out. I don't see the, I'm so grossed out right now, but. 
I hope you have an amazing weekend. Enjoy the rest of it, and I'll see you guys later. Show Mark some love by subscribing to his channel, liking the original video, and if you enjoyed my reaction, smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats, and as usual, be kind to one another. And that's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Ah, uh, got nothing but love for the Sauce Gang. Peace out, Sauce Gang.